Hello guys, I am Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 13 on using the SketchUp CAD software. And what I'm going to talk about today is the wall. What is the wall? The wall is what you hit in SketchUp when you start trying to create three-dimensional objects where you have a curved shape intersecting another curve shape. I think in the design world they call this manifolds. And let me kind of explain what I was trying to do here. I'll get out of your way and then move this over. I thought it would be a neat project and this was something that I was going to uh, do and have you guys work along with me. And what I wanted to do was make a little device that would sort M&Ms. And so you would have a funnel here and that funnel would go down into this device. Okay. And then you see the funnel would plug in and then this piston this piston would sit sit down in here and that piston would turn around and then what would happen is the piston turned around when it goes up to the top an M&M would drop in here and then it would rotate around and drop the M&M out of the bottom and then over here I was going to have a color sensor so it would bring the M&M to the color sensor see what color it was and then decide what to do with it then what I was going to have is like a little little colored boxes and so if you put the red box under this little machine it would give you all the red M&Ms it would sort the M&Ms you would just uh, get your bag of M&Ms pour them in and then it would sort them and put the red ones in the red box or if you had a blue box put the blue box under there it would put the blue M&Ms in it so I thought that'd be a neat project for us to do and I thought it'd be something that would maybe be a a cool thing if you're a college student interviewing for a job sort of show a real world engineering uh, project this is what happened this is what happened I hit the wall using SketchUp and basically while it looks like that I created a nice design here I was not able to get this to the form of something that I could 3d print and let me kind of try to tell you what the problem is where do we have luck in SketchUp well we could create objects like this remember this little case for our uh, for our eyeglasses right a nice little slip fit case for our eyeglasses. If you think about this, this is kind of fundamentally a two-dimensional design because you take a 2D shape and then you extrude it to create a 3D object. Now you can put holes on it or you could have different uh, widths as you go up it, but it's fundamentally a two-dimensional object. So you can do those in SketchUp. They work great. You can print them. What we also did was we did some things that were like a lot of putting two-dimensional shapes together and we got neat little things like this little box. Okay, this little box with little hinges. Okay, and we were able to design that and make that because this still is primarily two-dimensional structures. Some of them are two-dimensional extruded that way and some were two-dimensional extruded this way but they were still fundamentally kind of two-dimensional shapes. Then we started doing like these PVC joints right we did this and we did things like this where we could create something that's genuinely three dimensions right this is not just an extruded two-dimensional shape but this is a two-dimensional shape that is just pulled along another shape so you can take a 2d shape and you can have it follow a path and you can make something that is still printable what was different about what I was doing here and what caused the problem what caused the problem was that I was trying to cut a hole in a curved object or where you've got a hole going the other way so imagine like if you had this and I tried to cut another hole this way where this intersects the hole that's a very complicated shape and what I found that happened is you can draw it in uh, SketchUp and so I got this and it looked good but then when I tried to generate the STL file, the STL file had all types of errors. And what I think is happening is this solid object has what's called leaks. In other words, where those faces meet, there's places that they don't meet perfectly and you have leaks. Now, I tried a lot of different things. I tried to find extensions in SketchUp that I could download that would help fix this. I tried to design things more carefully and precisely. I tried to go in with the pencil tool and find the leaks and try to kind of draw little lines across them. I tried a lot of stuff and sometimes I could repair 
things using the pencil tool. But basically, I just spent three or four days and just found that I could not make uh, I could not make SketchUp generate models that would generate printable STL files. And particularly if you look at this, you can see that this little feature right here, this little feature right here, that little indentation is shaped like an M&M. So it's an M&M shaped hole inside this piston. And man, that thing just had all types of problems in there. And so it seems like SketchUp is more of a extruding, extruding two-dimensional shape. It seems like it's used a lot for architectural types of things, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to work as we need to do more uh, complicated designs. So let me show you uh, what happens if I take this and I come over and I export the STL and then I bring the STL uh, file into my slicer program. This is the uh, Persa uh, uh, slicer, slicer 3R slash 3R uh, for, the, for the Persa printer. And you can see when I bring it in that the thing is just not right at all and there's kind of problems on uh, several different uh, there's problems on several several different levels you can see that this just got completely confused on the funnel even it seems like it recognizes the inside surface but not the outside surface and then perhaps this one uh, this one the overall cylinder worked but the little hole didn't uh, didn't come in it I went to various algorithms that there's some STL re repair programs and I tried to use those but this was uh, beyond repair and same thing I can bring it into the uh, raise 3d idea maker slicer and this uh, you can see when I bring it in uh, well I guess you can't see you can see here when I bring it in I get an error let me see if I can make this where you can see it okay you see that it says it's got an error so I can click the model and I can tell it to try to repair the model and then it goes and it tries to repair but it still comes up with a lot of errors and you can see that it has like uh, you know what you would maybe think of as uh, incomplete faces and you can see a lot of the problems occur where you're trying to intersect that hole with that hole Okay, same thing here, intersecting the hole with the hole created problems in this face, created problems in this face. And then similarly over here, lots of problems. And so this basically is just not going to print. So why is it good that we started with SketchUp? Because SketchUp is a simple enough program that you can learn to design mechanical objects right we can design things that we can print it's perfectly suitable for things that you would be doing for like arduino projects where you needed little cases or little enclosures or little things for your arduino or raspberry pi projects it's perfectly suitable for that but at the point that you want to do really sophisticated things we're going to have to go to a more advanced software package I'm still glad that we started with SketchUp I'm glad that you learned it now we're going to probably go and learn Fusion 360 next and uh, you know don't don't get mad at me because even if I'd known this when I started I would have still started teaching you SketchUp because it does enough SketchUp does enough that you can do things that will make it useful but if you really 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 want to start doing uh, more sophisticated designs we're going to have to uh, we're going to we're going to have to move to a, a, a more sophisticated uh, modeling program so would love to hear your comments and your feedback below if you like this video think about giving us a thumbs up would really appreciate you subscribing to the channel if you're enjoying these lessons but most of all I'd really 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 like and appreciate your comments down below and I read every comment and I try to respond to as many of them as I can okay again this is Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later